Good morning. I'm happy to participate in the high-level roundtable on the International Treaty on Plant Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture. The report issued earlier this year by the International Panel on Climate Change paints a bleak picture for future food security. Food production will decline by 2% per decade as demand simultaneously increases by 14% until 2050. Global hunger hotspots will increase in both size and in severity. We urgently need to find crops and varieties that can grow in changing climates. To find these crops and varieties, the people who manage and conserve plant genetic resources all over the world need to work together to pool those resources and create a networked global collection. No country has all the genetic resources it needs. The International Treaty was designed to facilitate precisely this kind of cooperation between national governments, gene banks, researchers, plant breeders, development agencies, and farmers. The treaty is an international system for conserving, adding value, and sharing crop diversity, contributing to a whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. Biodiversity International works with the CGIAR research program on climate change, agriculture, and food security, piloting ways in which farmers, local seed providers, breeders, and gene bank managers can work together to implement and share the benefits of the International Treaty. For example, our Seeds for Needs initiative works with farmers and national gene banks to identify crop varieties that are best suited to current and future climate conditions in 11 countries. Our Genetic Resources Policy Initiative works with treaty member states to include their plant genetic resources into the treaty's global pool so that researchers, farmers, and breeders in these countries can access the global pool of diversity and benefit from capacity strengthening support available under the treaty. In 2006, Bioversity International signed an agreement with the governing body of the treaty, placing our international banana collection under the treaty's framework. Ten other centers in the CGIAR consortium signed similar agreements. Collectively, the CGIAR has placed approximately 750,000 accessions of crops and forages essential for global food security under the treaty's framework. We have provided millions of samples around the globe using the standard material transfer agreement. The treaty has become an extremely important part of the day-to-day -day lives of the centers in the CGIAR consortium. We are pleased to be able to contribute to the treaty's further implementation over the years to come. I would also like to highlight the importance of the treaty's International Benefit Sharing Fund. The fund has provided much needed, targeted capacity strengthening for farmers, national research organizations, and breeders in developing countries to participate in technology transfer. Biodiversity International considers the international treaty to be an indispensable instrument for the exchange, benefit sharing, and dialogue around plant genetic resources. I'd like to congratulate the treaty on its 10th anniversary and to reaffirm Biodiversity International's support for its great work. I wish you fruitful discussions today.